welcome to Bible Tract Echoes, a ministry of Bible Tracks Incorporated. Our mission is to take the Word of God to all the world. Our Bible teacher today is the director of Bible Tracks Incorporated, Pastor Mark Smith. Since 1938, Bible Tracks Incorporated has been publishing clear gospel tracks and supplying them to churches and individuals all over the world and all at no charge. Information on how you can receive a free sample packet of all of our tracks will be given at the end of this broadcast. And now for our Bible study, here's our teacher, Pastor Mark Smith. What a delight it is to be with you here once again at Bible Tract Echoes. Thanks for joining us. And I say that in a particular way, if this happens to be your very first time to be tuning into our time of Bible study and encouraging each other to walk in the Lord and sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ. Right now, my Bible sits open to the book of Romans chapter one. Romans one, if it's at all possible. Reach over, pick up your own copy of God's Word. Turn with me, please. Join me in Romans chapter 1. I'm going to begin to read at verse 11 here in just a moment. Along with your Bible, get something on which you can jot some notes and take down some information because I always try to give a clear outline, but with that pen and paper, you'll be prepared to jot down our contact information because you see, my friend, I've got a gift to give to you. I want to give to you a complete sample packet containing one each of all of our English gospel tracks. I'm going to highlight one of those tracks here in just a moment. And if you are a little bit unsure about what I mean by a gospel tract, I'll explain that as well. But let me prepare us for our Bible study time this way. Let me ask a very serious question, and here it is. Does the work of the gospel ever get hindered? Does the work of the gospel ever get hindered? Basically, this is a yes or no type question, and the answer is yes, it does. Gospel work in all of its facets does get hindered. But if I were to ask you why the work of the gospel is sometimes hindered, what would be your first answer? There's a lot of answers here, and none of them would be wrong to put first. I've asked that question over the process of time to some folk, and some have answered by saying that the gospel work was hindered because it's frankly just not being done by a whole lot of people, and that's true. Some other people said that the sinful testimony of the God's people who are called to do gospel work has hindered gospel work, and that's true. A third answer I've received a lot is that gospel leaders aren't training believers how to do gospel work, and that's all true as well. Today, as we come to Romans 1, we're going to focus on the Apostle Paul. He was a godly, powerful believer doing gospel work, but yet he was hindered in his work at times. Why? Get your Bible and let's find out. Before I begin to read there in Romans chapter 1, I mentioned those gospel tracts a moment ago. A gospel tract is an evangelism tool. It's a tool to help us share the gospel, disseminate the gospel to more people. A gospel tract is a short written presentation of God's plan of salvation. In that sample packet, there are 40 different gospel tracts. I want to give it to you. I can't do it unless you give to us your name and mailing address. So be prepared to jot down how to contact us. The particular gospel tract in my hand right now is entitled, Where Are the Dead? Where are the dead? Well, the answer comes this way. Let me read you the beginning of the track. It says, where are the dead? Well, that depends on how they died. You can die in the Lord, Revelation 14, 13, or in your sins, John 8, 21. It goes on to say that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. It goes on to say that the heart is deceitful above all things. It goes on to say that you were born with a sinful nature, you are not a sinner because you sin. You sin because you're a sinner, and the wages of sin is death. And it goes on to explain that we need a Savior so that we need not die in our sins. It's a very clear, straightforward, good 
tool to share the gospel. Where are the dead? Just one of the 40 tracks in that sample packet. Be ready at the end of the program when my announcer gives our contact information. If you can't wait to the end, you can go to our website, which is Bible Tracks, Inc., Dot org, BibleTracksInc.org. Inc. With your Bible open to Romans chapter 1, beginning at verse 11, the Bible says this, For I long to see you that I may impart unto you some spiritual gift to the end that ye may be established. That is, that I may be comforted together with you by the mutual faith, both of you and me. Now, I would not have you ignorant, brethren, that oftentimes I purposed to come unto you, but was the latter hindered hitherto, that I might have some fruit among you also, even as among other Gentiles. Please, we'll stop right there for today. Yesterday, I began looking at verses 11 to 15. I have titled these verses with these two words, Paul's intent. Paul's intent. This godly apostle intended to visit Rome, and he was very clear about that right up front here in the early verses of the book. I gave some reasons yesterday as to why he wanted to visit Rome. What purposes did he have? Today, I want to look at the resistance. I move from the reasons to the resistance that he faced to see all this happen. Paul says in verses 11 to 13, he says why he wanted to go there. And again, he gave his reasons and all of the reasons were godly and Christ honoring. There is nothing there to aggrandize Paul and make Paul look good. But Paul faced barriers. He faced resistance in seeing his godly goals happen. Verse 13 again says in the middle of it, Oftentimes I purpose to come unto you, but I was let, that word let means hindered, I was hindered hitherto. Paul had purposed or had personally planned to go to Rome sometime in the past, but he's not made it yet. Let me turn right now over to the 15th chapter here in Romans. Listen to what verse 23 says. I'm reading now. Having a great desire there that these many years to come unto you. Did you hear that? Having a great desire these many years to come unto you. This goal of Paul to visit Rome was no recent passion for him, but he had been hindered for years now. Why? I find three things in Paul's ministry that hindered his gospel work, and none of these are due to his personal sin. Now, please listen. I have every confidence that Paul struggled with sin like you and I do, but sin is not one of his three hindrances, nor, by the way, was it apathy. Let me give you the three reasons I find here in the Word of God, the things that hindered Paul in doing his gospel work. And I'm going to use three words, all beginning with the letter S, like in the word soup, to highlight them. Are you ready? Number one is this, the Spirit. The Spirit. I'm referring to the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit hindered Paul at times. You say, oh, Brother Mark, you better explain that. Well, Paul was a planning kind of a guy. He set goals, and that's a good thing. And I am very confident that he was like a bulldog in trying to accomplish his goals, and that, too, is a good thing. Over in the book of Acts, chapter 16 and verse 6, I read these words. Now, when they were gone through Phrygia and the region of Galatia and were forbidden of the Holy Spirit to preach in Asia... Did you hear that? Forbidden of the Holy Spirit. Paul's gospel work was hindered by the Holy Spirit because God's plans for Paul were different than Paul's plans. I'm going to come back to that here in a moment. Hang on to that thought. Number two, what was the hindrance to Paul's gospel work? My second word is the word Satan. Satan hindered Paul's gospel work at times. Let me read another verse to you. This one comes from 1 Thessalonians 2.18, and it reads like this. Wherefore, we would have come unto you, even I, Paul, once and again, but Satan hindered us. The word translated hindered there means to hold back. It means to stop. It means The word implies being actively doing a hindering activity. 
you know how Jesus was tempted by Satan in Matthew chapter 4. There, Satan was trying to hinder the work of the gospel by temptation. In the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 4, there it says that Satan blinds the minds of people to the gospel. That hinders gospel work. Matthew chapter 4, Satan perverts the scriptures. That hinders gospel work. 2 Thessalonians 2.9 says that Satan performs lying wonders. That hinders gospel work. In the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 14, Satan takes on the form of an angel of light. That can hinder gospel work. The third hindrance to Paul's gospel work is this. Number three, my third S, is the word sickness. Number one was spirit. Number two, Satan. Number three, sickness. Paul was hindered due to physical health issues. Now, you're probably familiar with a verse in 2 Corinthians, but let me begin in 1 Corinthians. In 1 Corinthians chapter 2, Paul, when he wrote to the church at Corinth, reminded them that while he was there serving, he worked there among them in weakness, in weakness. But yes, over in 2 Corinthians chapter 12, Paul wrote about a thorn in his flesh, and he said that Satan was the cause behind that thorn. And I have every reason to say exactly what Paul just said. It was a Satan wrought thorn in the flesh. What was that thorn? Nobody knows. I'm not going to conjecture. But other people who have been very active and powerful gospel workers, they've been laid aside from doing gospel work by things like heart attacks, diabetes, strokes, paralysis, and things like that. Frankly, Mark Smith has found that just by getting older and my bones and muscles experience this thing called aging, that I find doing some things for Christ harder now than they used to be. And I hear a hearty amen out there across the waves as the radio broadcast goes out. Now, every one of these hindrances I listed here, the hindrance of, of the Spirit of God altering his course, Satan hindering, and the sickness, his body getting older, his body body experiencing physical health issues, all of these things were real. But in all of these things, I see Paul doing one same thing. When the Spirit hindered Paul, what did he do? He submitted to the Holy Spirit's direction. He surrenders his own plans, and he goes on doing gospel work. When Satan hindered him, what did he do? Well, Paul identifies that it was Satan hindering, and Paul keeps going on doing gospel work. When sickness is the cause, what does Paul do? He seeks God's strength, 2 Corinthians 12 says. He seeks God's strength when his body is weak, but he keeps going on doing gospel work. So now I've got to ask you and I the question, what did it take to stop you and I from praying. That's gospel work. What does it take to stop you and I from telling the gospel to the person next to us? That certainly is gospel work. What is it that stops us from giving out a gospel tract? That giving out a gospel tract is so easy, even a Christian can do it. What is stopping you from giving out gospel tracts? Maybe you don't have any. Listen as my announcer tells you how to get gospel tracts from us right now. Thank you for joining us today for Bible Tract Echoes, a ministry of Bible Tracts Incorporated. If you would like to receive a free sample packet of all of our tracts, you can contact us by calling 309 828 6888. That's 309 309- 828-6888. Our mailing address is P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. A faster way to contact us is to go to our website at BibleTracksInc.org. That's BibleTracksInc.org. There you will find more information about our ministry and details on how you can support Bible Tracks Incorporated. Thanks for listening, and may the Lord richly bless you as you serve Him.